Hi everyone, welcome to String and Story. My name is Holly Ann Knight and it's my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. Welcome to today's tutorial where I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a simple sawtooth star using your AccuQuilt Go. Now guys, I'm using dies from the 8 inch cube for AccuQuilt, so we're going to end up with an 8 inch finished star block today. Let's take a look at the dies that you need in order to make this block. We need just four dies today in order to make our block. Die number one, which is a big square. Die number two, which is a four patch. Die number four, which is a uh, hourglass or quarter square triangles block. And die number five, which is a half square triangles block. So looking at the front of these, you can see them here block. Die number one, die number two, die number three, and die number four, which, correction, one and two, four and five. See, I'm trying to count them off and already making this confusing for you guys. Now, y'all, I love this simple sawtooth star because it is an easy way to use up some scraps. Now, I have fairly big scraps here today so that we're not doing anything too fiddly, but we're gonna use a leftover 10 inch square and a little bit of extra navy fabric, all right? And I just realized I should grab a pair of scissors before we get started and make sure I just have that handy. Makes the cutting process a little easier if we have trimming as we are going along uh, from some of these uh, pieces of fabric being a little bigger than we need. All right, now as you can see on this sawtooth star, we need that one big square for the center. Our half square triangle bits are going to be for the side. These are our four patches, and here's our quarter square triangle. All right, so let's start with that biggest block. This is die number one, that big square, and we're going to cut out the center of our sawtooth star. Now I'm leaving just a little bit of extra. I can take my fingers and feel that blade right along the edge. I'm making sure that the grain of my fabric is lined up with the edge of the die. You notice the die's on a little bit of an angle. That's so as it goes through these rollers, there's not a whole bunch of scrunching and smushing that happens. And I can lay my cutting mat right here on top. We're gonna go ahead and roll die number one through our active well. All right, that extra fabric, you'll see it just kind of floats off to the side, not a problem at all. And if I bring this die over here, you guys can watch as I slide my mat off, it helps break any static electricity. See, and this is why I wanted to bring my scissors over because I've been making a lot of these blocks lately. And if I end up with just a stray thread or two, I can give it a quick snip so I get a nice, clean center square. All right, we're gonna simply work our way through the dies here, which means we're actually gonna change fabric now. As we head into die number two, this was our four patch. And remember, we're using these for the corner bits of this block, okay? And again, this fabric's a little bit big, not a big deal. I'll just line up what I need. It's just kind of one of those weird leftover bits from a previous project. Making this sawtooth star is one of my favorite ways to cut scraps down. I'm not a big scrap quilter. Um, any of you guys who have been sewing with me for a hot minute know that. So I'm always looking for ways to immediately turn scraps into projects. Because if they do not become a project right away, um, then frankly, I'm going to get rid of them. So I'm going to give them away. I'm going to put them in a grab box and list them on my social media, something like that. But what I love about AccuQuilt is when there's fabric that I really love, and I want to turn it into something, but I'm unsure how to use up those little bits. You can tell I've been using this die a lot because I'm not getting a clean cut. I probably need to clean it out. Or the other thing that I recommend is if you've got uh, just one piece of fabric going through, sometimes it's helpful to roll it through a couple of times, get a little bit of extra pressure on that die because you don't have multiple layers of fabric piling up pressure together. All right, there's our four patch, ta-da! All right, so that's die number two. Again, we can set that one to the side. Die number three is this quarter square triangle. This is our third die. It's die number four. That's how many times I've messed that up now. We're again going to be rolling this navy fabric through. So let me show you how it helps to go to press it through a couple of times so that we get a cleaner cut. If you think about it, be rotating your presser or your cutting mat so that you're getting grooves into both sides, okay? As I pass this through, I'm then literally just gonna wheel it back the other direction. Because when you have more fabric under here, there's more pressure, right? And with a little bit less pressure from it just being a single layer of fabric, 
Sometimes it's helpful just to roll it a couple of times. Slide that die off. See how it's already peeling up because it's already nice and cut. Here we go. All right, so I still had one that didn't get cut all the way through. Single layers are tricky, guys. Oh, but what I was saying a minute ago is I love my AccuQuilt because it makes it possible for me, as someone who doesn't really identify as a scrap quilter, to cut bits down um, and turn them into gorgeous quilts. All right, that was die number four. Our final die, die number five. This is a half square triangle die. And I'm actually gonna fold this fabric in half. Let's see, I need two, I need a set of half square triangles per side. So we're gonna see, can you feel that die? You can see guys, I've got this cut edge here. I'm gonna see, oh, I don't know that it's quite gonna do it. So what I'll be able to do, I'm figuring out the most thrifty way to use my fabric here, guys. Because I need to cut through four layers. Oh, that's gonna be just, oh, that's gonna be right on the money. All right, let's see if we can do this. So I just folded up my fabric to get four layers. Remember, I'm cutting out of this leftover 10 inch square. I have plenty of fabric. So that allows me to use a big area of the fabric. Let's do an extra pass just to be safe. That allows me to use a big area of the fabric really efficiently. And slide this off. Let's see if it cut through these folds. It was right on the fold, so I may have that side cut through. Looks like I've got one little snip to make here. And maybe one little snip to make here where it didn't quite catch on that fold. Look at that nice, precise half square triangles trimmed out even though I'm cutting from funky little bits of fabric, right? Having to do some trimming because of that, I know my pieces are still coming out nice and accurate. Just like that, I've got my half square triangles, my quarter square triangles, those corner squares, and my center square. So come with me, we'll head over to the sewing machine and I'll show you guys how to put this block together. Welcome back, you guys. As you can see, I've laid out my block here next to my machine. And I'm gonna show you simply how to put this sawtooth star together. It's really amazingly easy. First, we need to make all of our little flying geese units. So you're gonna take that bigger body of the goose from that quarter square triangle and line up one side of those half square triangle bits with the flat edge and simply feed through your machine with a quarter inch seam. Repeat that step for one half of all of these geese. All right. Now remember, one of the gorgeous things about the AccuQuilt is first of all, we get nice crisp cuts. As we saw at the beginning of this tutorial, sometimes it's a little harder when you're just cutting one layer, but how often are we really just cutting one layer? <laughs> so you get nice, crisp, accurate cuts. And then you also have pieces cut that don't have dog ears. So we don't have to have any additional steps as we're going along with this in order to get these nice, accurate flying geese all put together, okay? Now I am going to snip these guys off the back of my machine and come right over here to press them. Personally, I love to use my sunflower quilts thread cutter just to pop these little units apart. Makes it real easy. And then I can quickly press each side open. Now I have little half geese and we're gonna repeat the same activity on the other side. So lining up one of those flat sides and then going under our machine with a quarter inch seam. You notice I'm just chain piecing these puppies together. 
throw a little leader and ender at the end of the chain so I don't even have to break the red. Makes this whole process go super quick. And just like we did with that first side, I'm gonna put this ender under my needle, use my Sunflower Quilts thread cutter, separate all my sections, and give them a quick press before we put the whole block together. Now you'll notice that I've had my whole block laid out here on the table and that's because I like to use a technique called webbing to put my blocks together. This works for blocks, it also works for quilt tops. So let me show you how it works. First, we're gonna work these first two columns, sewing them together. And then I will take those three off the machine, feeding that ender in and clipping them, but leave them chain piece together in order to add this third column, okay? If you were working this on a quilt top, you would just keep on adding columns onto that right hand side. Do you see it? Do you guys see what I did? Am I good? I am. Okay. When sewing stars, it's completely normal to have a moment of panic where you're not sure you got your star points going the right direction. Just heads up. Um, but when you're sewing, if you were webbing a quilt top, you would just keep adding columns off to that right hand side till everything was connected. Um, a sets of chain piecing, then you would take that whole little web bit over to your pressing board, press your seams in opposite directions, and then sew your row seams. We're going to do that on a miniature scale here. So see how I have these chained together now? These little thread bits, and this is just a little tiny webbing project, and we're going to add this, but this again works for big blocks and big quilts as well. So adding this next column onto the right side, It's so nice that we didn't have to do any kind of trimming or fiddling or anything with these flying geese. It makes it so much easier. And again, pull that ender around to the front. You guys can see how this is all webbed together, nice and floaty, all right? Now I'm gonna put this right side down over on my pressing block and I'm gonna press the seams how I want them to line up when the block is completely finished. Okay, so personally with, with this block, I like to press the top and bottom row seam out, so away from those geese. I press the center geese seams inward. And again, that bottom row I will press out. And that way everyone nests together. That is such a hard word, y'all. Nests. All right, so I'm gonna bring this over and I wanna lay it down so you guys can see what I'm describing here. All right, so see how I have these seams going out, these seams going in, and these seams going out again. All right. And then again, we just fold these rows up on each other. I'm lining up that seam because I pressed them to nest. I am not using pens, but if you prefer pens, you absolutely can. Now, right here, can you see underneath this needle, just barely maybe, where those two seams on that goose cross, I wanna be just a thread above that cross as I bring my seam in because that's how I'm gonna make sure I've got a nice crisp point, okay? And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing with this other seam, the final seam of our block. You can already see that. See how nice and crisp it made that point? All right, same thing on this side.
Now that goose was cut out from the fold, so it's got that little bit of extra fabric on the side. That's why I'm lining it up offset. Remember guys, not a perfect piece around here. This is why I love AccuQuilt. It helps improve my accuracy. But sometimes funky things still go down. And again, you can see nice crisp point. So let's take this over to the pressing board. I like to set my seam on the back side and then gently flip it open by hand. Hit it with the iron. Ta da! One quick, easy, and beautiful saute star, nice crisp points, compliments of the AccuQuilt. Thank you so much for joining me today for the Sawtooth Star Block tutorial. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this simple, classic block with your Alki quilt. Now, I'd like to invite you to jump over to my friend, Homemade Emily Jane, to learn how to make a variation of this O block so that you too can make a gorgeous two block quilt. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider subscribing to my channel. You can also find me at www.stringandstory.com.